know Mission Statement is not an exciting thing, so I, I know Dane and Turf titled it something, and I'll title it something else. Um, essentially, we're all three uh, put together this video, and it's going. we all three will have different versions. And the way I'm kind of doing it differently is essentially I'm going to, like, I'm going to kind of explain how I, I how I came to, like, to the point where I'm, uh, where we're doing the mission statement, the fan initiative, and, you know, give you the kind of the origin story, and then we'll watch it. Uh, the script for the, the fandom initiative mission statement here is uh, something I was actually putting together before I even knew Dane and Turf. Um... Because my original mission statement video, which is still the trailer video on my channel, um, that, you know, that was fairly popular. And I was like, okay, maybe I should do some sort of follow-up. I wasn't exactly sure how to do a follow-up. And, you know, how exactly to do that follow-up didn't even become clear to me until uh, I met Dane and Turf. And we started doing this Phantom Initiative tip thing. And kind of I just learned more about um, exactly what it was that we're dealing with, with uh, these anti-fans and their networks. Yeah, and so essentially uh, how it ended up working out is uh, I told Dane and Turf, hey, I have a cool idea for uh, a mission statement for the Phantom Initiative. And, I, and at first they're like, uh, you know, w you know, we don't want you to put too much work into it if, if, if it's not going to work. And I told them, hey, guys, I'll, I'll throw, throw together a couple pages. And if you guys don't like it, we can junk it. If you guys want to edit, you can edit it. Um, but I'll, I'll throw together a couple pages of a mission statement. So that's what ended up happening. I, I shared it with them and they loved it and they, they, they contributed it quite a bit to the script, uh, actually. So, you know, there, there's quite a bit of their words in there too. It's not just my script. My script is like a, a second or third draft. And then once they came on and we got to like, you know, four or five drafts really. Um, and then, yeah, and. And then Dane edited it because I remember it being like thing like, well, do we want to edit our sections? And Dane was like, I have an idea. I want to edit it. It's like, OK, so Dane put together. So that's the thing. Like, I know what this is at the script level and I know my own recorded parts, but the actual edited final piece, I do not know. I do not know what this mission statement is going to be like. And I know some of you guys have probably already seen it. I'm excited to see what Dane did, because I, I, like I said, I've seen little clips of it and it's like fucking gold but yeah let's uh let's check this thing out You know, I could talk about why I don't like anti-fandom, but I'd rather talk about why I like the term anti-fandom, because I think it's a really good term. Anti-fandom, this movement, isn't about fandom or the media. It's about power, it's about brotherhood and ganging up. It's about feeling like you know some big secret, like you're the little guy taking on the big shadowy leftist woke powers. At the end of the day, it's make-believe, it's playing pretend for adults, or, you know, man-children. Despite what any of them say, it isn't about fandom. It's contrary to the definition of fandom, which is basically liking things together as a community. The end result of all this is just a vortex of hate and misery, and it's all revolving around this missing center where the media or the community or the liking should be, and it just isn't. It's the stunning and brave. Oh my god. This isn't what you'd expect. 
no matter how much hate you expect. No matter how much hate you know you will get. You are never prepared for how hard it hits you. Hundreds to thousands of people sent to call you names. To bully you. To intimidate you. They are sent to hate on you. And perhaps much worse. This is what happens when you pierce the anti-fandom bubble. It's not fun. Because this soy shit's been so disproven and you love to use it. It's a nice way of not calling you gay. You know, oh, like in the old so way of like gay. people used so to say, let me ask dude, you stop this. being is so gay. Is gay an insult? Yeah. yeah. But it's also not entirely unexpected. He's a great supporting character and a supporting actor, which is what Diego Luna should be. But of course, Diego Luna has the diversity aspect and they're pushing identity politics with this. They 100% are. When you decide to call out these toxic channels for what they are, which is just a cesspool of bigotry. I got these faggots like uh, responding to comic skate elves. What's more racist, calling somebody a nigger or doing a lynching? where the worst of the toxic community gather. A white guy will eat a piece of chicken and be like, mm, that's some good chicken, watermelon, <laughs> watermelon's yeah. good. Black people will eat it and they say, mm, 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 that's some good watermelon. You'll get pushed back. And even if you think you're ready for it, it'll hit you harder than you expect. When many big studios made it clear that they would be making an effort to be more inclusive with their projects involving more women, people of color, and members of the LGBTQ community, most people had our reaction. Nice. It's about time. Largely done just because public opinion had shifted so far into supporting this that they can't ignore it. We don't delude ourselves. It's done for money. But it's a step in the right direction. You take the wins where you can, and then continue to push for more. But that's not what these channels push for. They want art to go in the opposite direction. And make claims like, keep politics out of it. Identity politics, PC, SJW, pandering, tokenization. The message. Sacrificing story for agenda. Or the current grand catch-all, woke. The truth is, these are all buzzwords, used to dog whistle and hide their true meaning. And it all boils down to the same thing, hatred of women and minorities. Hello, I guess I just want to have a little chit chat. Something that's been on my mind lately, over cynical reviews of pretty much non-consequential media. I'm not even sure I'll call it um, cynical, is more bashing. A lot of it's based off of perception of like representation and all that stuff. You hear these buzzwords and you hear them all the time. Man, just trying to sit down and enjoy something. You know, when you sit there and try to have that experience, it kind of takes you out of it. it kind of ruins the experience. And the truth is, if you look down the road, did your life change that much over one show, one movie? No, it's just a moment in time. Thank you. And I hope you all have a good day. They have a memorial to George Floyd. This is Ryan Kennel, an alt-right YouTuber. He's the perfect example of the most insidious, toxic type of anti-fan. George Floyd Memorial! With Ryan is Alex Stein, employee of Glenn Beck's Blaze TV and far-right propagandist. Ryan made a lot of videos about the She-Hulk series on Disney+, Plus, many of them before the show ever came out. And yet he really only had one thing to say in every video. Seems like nobody really cares about She-Hulk. To promote a garbage series that nobody gives a fuck about, they're using this character and his reveal, his in-costume reveal, in a show no one cares about to get people excited about a show that no one cares about. This is not how a fan behaves. It's also not how a non-fan behaves. If he's not interested in the show, why does he talk about it so much? Well, his interest isn't in the show itself. It's how many clicks he can get off of telling people that nobody cares about the show. These YouTubers pump out this repetitive, specifically worded content every day, always focused on anything they can call woke. The effect it has on unsuspecting regular viewers is indoctrination. It seems like nobody really cares about She-Hulk. They oversimplify the topic, 
They use emotionally charged and loaded language that elicits animosity every single day. This is how the alt-right and the far-right have successfully drawn regular people into their politics for several years now. This content is not age-restricted. They're using this character and his reveal, his in-costume reveal, in a show no one cares about to get people excited about a show that no one cares about. The more you dive into this, the more you realize what YouTube has done by allowing the algorithm to push these channels. They've created a pipeline where people who maybe just want to watch their favorite nerd content or just a simple movie review can easily be led to some pretty atrocious stuff. Was it was it liberating or was it super liberating for you to say the N-word? These channels give already bigoted people the rhetoric to hide their true thoughts behind fandom. Can you say it now? The N-word? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> those who otherwise might not be hateful, Nick. it molds their views to the point that they actually think that they're just being logical. When the Little Mermaid trailer released and there was news about backlash to her being cast with a black actress, that's driven by these guys. Anytime a Marvel movie comes out, these people will say MCU, as if to say that somehow women are taking over and therefore ruining it. The backlash to the Obi-Wan Kenobi show and the recent Lord of the Rings shows Data studies connected that backlash to these YouTube channels. And we're not saying that anyone who doesn't like these things is a far-right lunatic, but much of the narratives, often established about a show or a movie long before it even comes out, clearly gets pushed with coordination and intention by these channels. We don't believe that everyone who likes this content is like a slobbering neo-Nazi, and that's the really sinister part of it. Gamers, I have black friends right now. <laughs> The content grabs hold of people and weaponizes their biases, and in many cases, they don't even realize that they're parroting extremist rhetoric. This type of foot indoor indoctrination has been responsible for some historically tragic outcomes. Representation of anything except white men is framed as an attack on white men, which primes unaware people for toxicity online at best, and at worst, violent action offline. The man who attacked Paul Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband, was deeply into anti-fandom circles. Drop the hammer. Um, no. Hey, 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 hey. What is Sorry, going on? Right I'm not getting an answer. I'm calling oh. Am I saying that they inspired his violence? No. But when the rhetoric he spewed online is identical to the fandom menace in Comics Gates and various other satellite groups, when he shares their content to justify openly hateful ideas about media, there's no denying it plays a role. Oh, fuck, you better look outside. <laughs> you better look out January 6th. Kick that fucking door open. Right-wing media has pushed the narrative that anyone who acknowledges gay or trans people existing and simply think they should be treated equally is a groomer. The real conversion therapy that happens in our world today is the kind where a child is converted into LGBT. And that notion in a short amount of time rose up online to be everywhere. They're just evil. They're bad people and they want to groom kids. It's based on nothing. It's based on nothing but just disgusting bias and, and prejudice. But it's used to dehumanize queer people. These channels use that rhetoric too. The father of the man responsible for the shooting of Club Q in Colorado reportedly was happy at least his son wasn't gay. And that case becomes worse when you see right-wing media figures falsely accuse the victims of Club Q being groomers and thus justify the terrible action the shooter committed there. That same exact notion is extremely common in fan spaces on YouTube. You probably know who Alex Winter is, or at least his character, Bill S. Preston Esquire. I'm Bill. He's got a documentary coming out in June called The YouTube Effect about just this phenomenon. The trailer calls this current era the misinformation apocalypse and promises to explore right-wing radicalization on the platform. I don't agree that it is just a reflection of society. It's changed society. If we don't figure out this problem, we're going to lose what it means to be human. There's a podcast and a series of investigative reports by a group called Rewriting Ripley, including timeline and data studies, showing the direct links from the fandom menace to far-right media. And when I say far-right, I mean white nationalism, QAnon, open calls for the deaths of LGBT people. We're not just some clickbaiting YouTubers trying to create sensation. These are facts, and they have a serious influence. 
We've taken the initiative to try to get people to see the truth in front of our faces. A bunch of left-wing nut jobs that have to infiltrate every aspect of your life and your business. They need to know what kind of food you eat. They need to determine what type of movies you like. They need to determine who you vote for. They need to determine how you raise your kids. They need to determine what you put into your body. Fuck these left-wing people. These channels aren't actually fan channels upset about politics in their movies. How much does the Blaze pay you? Blaze doesn't pay me that much. I'm only a video contributor. I only show up every like once or twice mm -hmm. at the most a week. I mean, you mm -hmm. did. You got your That's picture. You got your picture on the wall. You must do something for him. Yeah, because I'm a video contributor. Why wouldn't my picture be on the wall? They're political channels using movies and fandom to propagate misinformation and hate. Don't let their outward persona of being passionate fans who are simply upset with the current treatment of beloved franchises fool you. These people are not fans, and it's time to expose them for what they are. Dangerous. But we can't do this alone. However, we know that taking a stance against anti-fandoms is not an easy thing to do. Each and every one of us has faced our fair share of kickback, our videos often get bombarded with dislikes, get hate comments, and we see the same disgusting rhetoric that the anti-fandom channels use get recycled over and over and over again. Kill yourself. Ballot. And while comments like these don't affect me personally because perhaps I am a masochist, I understand that content creators don't want to be subject to this kind of harassment and hate. However, I ask you this. Do you truly care about the fandoms that you're a part of? Do you truly care about movies, TV shows, video games, and other media? And do you care about honest and respectful media criticism and maintaining open spaces where fans can share their passions with each other without having to deal with man babies who cry woke at everything? If the answer is yes, then I ask you to not stand idly by and watch as fandoms are ripped apart, and watch buzzwords like woke be misused to build resentment towards minorities and progressive social movements, all while being disguised as valid media criticism. The people who listen to anti-fandom channels are getting trained to believe that woke is bad, and woke is anything non-white, non-heterosexual, non-cisgender, and non-traditional gender roles. Hey, yeah, alright, let's make fun of these, these weirdos, just a show for a bunch a lesbian that's the only appeal that it has that obviously just put it in a position because of her her status she's one of those typical pronoun brigade weirdos put some mental illnesses and all that shit in her bio and all that she doubled down on this idea that vixen was gay they seem to write these gay characters as predators all the time this is a problem that will keep rising if we don't join the fight this pipeline for insanity all begins with seemingly simple media critics like the critical drinker nerd Roddick, geeks and gamers ryan kinnell mauler ethan van Skyver, Eric July, and many, many more. And I hate to say it, but the honest critic has lost this round. Even if these popular channels get shut down, they'll be laughing all the way to the bank. They've made their money, and that is likely all they care about because evidence supports that these anti-fandom critics are simply grifters exploiting the algorithm to make money. Um, I, and I appreciate that. Uh, I just, I mean, not to, not to sound like a dick, but I just don't care. Um, I mean, there's 400 people watching this stream. If one of them knows my name now that didn't know it before, it's a success for me. Um, I, at the end of the day, I have tried to get build geeks and gamers by doing it the structured way, the uh, methodical way, the think it out, prep it, you know, take notes, you know, think about everything you're going to say. And it fucking failed miserably on me. The day that I started doing what I'm doing right now, which is what you're, you know, having a problem with is the day that I started becoming successful. Why do you feel the need to call it out all the time? Call what out? Representation in media. What do you mean call it out? Like what, what, what is, you make, what, what is the problem with Miles Morales? Tokenization. That's it. That's simple. I have a long form video explaining exactly what I mean when I say tokenization. And we're talking about race, sexuality and gender swaps uh, pertaining to these characters. Out of curiosity, Miguel O'Hara. What about him? What would you define him as? I define everybody that's not Peter Parker as an unoriginal Peter Parker. 
So if you have been depicted a black Batman, you're going to get some backlash. And yeah, some characters have been written decently that are of different races and have suited up in the suit of a hero or a version of that hero. One of the more obvious is Miles Morales as Spider-Man. One of the more obvious is Miles Morales as Spider-Man. Now, most of these types of efforts are forced, corny, and lazy, but at least Miles Morales has his own background. I define everybody that's not Peter Parker as an unoriginal Peter Parker. This is far better than just simply making Peter Parker a black guy. But Miles is an exception, make no mistake. So, do you like Miles Morales then? No. They don't care about the effect they're having. But please don't misunderstand me. These channels are still right wing, even far right at that. They still believe that Trump should be president. They still hate progressive politics. They still hate seeing people from any minority play a significant role in their media. These people are inherently political, despite their appearance of being apolitical fans who just want politics to stay out of their media. However, their content is still disingenuous. They do this almost purely to make money. They don't care about the fandoms they claim to to be a part of, they couldn't care less about the media they claim to love. They don't actually want anything to change because if Hollywood stopped being so-called woke, then these channels would lose their source of income, popularity, and relevance. As fans, they rarely ever talk about the things that they actually enjoy, and on the off chance that they do, it's often to bring down something they hate. These people have no integrity, there's no consistency to their ideology or their content, and there doesn't need to be because it's a mind virus intent on corrupting the brains of of the people who watch. Anti-fandoms are detrimental not just to the media and fandoms that we love, but also to the outside world and the rhetoric and ideologies they spread. And listen, you don't need to like The Last Jedi, you don't need to love every new MCU movie, you can still think that there are examples of disingenuous diversity from companies aiming to take advantage of political movements that often result in shallow progressivism and tokenization. These things are fine, we can discuss this respectfully as fans. However, that's not what these channels spew. The anti-fandom is hateful. They feed on outrage, and they're dangerous. But these things come in waves. The critics who were big when I started on YouTube were Chris Stuckman, Red Letter Media, Jeremy Johns, Screen Junkies, Your Movie Sucks, Mr. Sunday Movies, CinemaSins, and many others I am certainly forgetting. Think what you will of them. They actually talk about movies instead of turning the review into a 10 to 15 minute lecture on wokeness. I was on YouTube when these Phantom Menace channels stood up making their nonstop parade of videos attacking Ghostbusters 2016. Brie Larson, The Last Jedi, Captain Marvel, they are coming faster and faster with Obi-Wan Kenobi, Rings of Power, and She-Hulk all this past year. There's an effect in social psychology called the bystander effect. The idea is that so many people see something happen and don't do anything simply because they assume someone else will take care of it. The individual decides their action is unnecessary because surely someone else will address it. But the bystander effect is when everyone assumes this. When everyone assumes this, nothing gets done to fix the wrong. I watched thousands of hours of bad political videos rise up to prominence and I ignored it, assuming that free speech would resolve this the best ideas would naturally rise above the chaos. How wrong I was. So love us or hate us, one thing is certain, we are not backing down. There needs to be a counter voice to provide an alternative to the voices that dominate these social media platforms. So, we've teamed up, organized chaos, actual fandom, and turf nation to provide a real voice to media commentary. And we're looking for allies. We've already partnered with channels like Willis Greedia, Eric's Verse, and we have a team of people behind the scenes helping with research and more. The screams from commenters can be brutal. It's a hard time to try to start on YouTube and share your love of movies, comic books, and really any sort of fandom without getting these anti-fans trolling your comments. That's why it's important to work together as much as possible. Alone, these negative voices are much stronger than you may expect. But with allies and friends, it becomes much easier to see these negative voices for what they truly are. The loud shouts of a conservative minority trying desperately to bring you down to their level. Apathy gives them power. And that's how they've grown to such prominence. And you are the vital component to ensuring the anti-fandom's reign ends. Like, subscribe, and comment on videos of people with actual critiques. Help support new YouTubers with honest, actual takes on media. 
these voices need to be elevated. The Fandom Initiative is here to counterbalance the voices of the anti-fandom and elevate the voices of actual YouTubers who just want to talk honestly about their fandoms. And these voices need to be pushed in the algorithm. Because if they aren't, then the next wave of anti-fandom will take over. And I assure you, they are even worse than the current stars of this movement. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth.